around and tell the people about the musical news coming your way. Big Deal Sounds presents, presents Dub Stories Online Limited Series. Thursdays at 9 p.m. GMT plus three. You just say something interesting. You're a building engineer by profession. Yeah. How do you combine that with the sound system? Well, um, my main job until seven years ago was the sound system only. Okay. And the dub studio for like from 99. Uh I was in the university. I was working as a DJ all the while. Uh And from seven years, I'm a professional engineer. Uh But seven years ago, we were already on the third generation of IBM. So I have like seven more people working on the sounds okay. they travel every weekend okay and i just take care personally of the main events i mean if there is a mazura in new york okay. i go there okay but the, the rest of the guys uh-huh. and do do the work and okay. especially jackie that is like a half of the the company mm-hmm. and is the sounds is every hour is his main job he has no other job so he take okay. care of the music um, 24 hours to okay. 24 Okay. I want to welcome you to the show. Okay. And I want to thank you so much for the link. You're welcome. It's up to you. Let's start it off by okay. introduction. Who is Heavy Hammer? Where did it begin? How okay. long have you been in the industry? Okay. And Heavy Hammer is born in 99. We come from the school days. Mm-hmm. And we were like 18, 19 before. Yeah, you have to um, to put in, in the map that we are from South Italy. South Italy is a very poor place. Okay. And everybody that wants to go to the university, go in the north, go in Milan mm-hmm. and uh, Rome, mm-hmm. not really in the south. There is, the, at that time, the university was not really good. Mm-hmm. So staying here was meant to work right away or find a better life in the north. Okay. So like everybody else, the, the crew was made for of four people and all four went out. Mm-hmm. One in the army and three in the university or any other work just in the north where the, the job, the, where we could look for work. And I started playing in Milan in 99 and Milan at that time was the, the temple of Italy. I mean, you can have Bujabanton on Friday, mm-hmm. Cocotti on Wednesday, uh, Mighty Crown on, on the Saturday and so on for years. Mm-hmm. And we, I build a link with the local promoters, and obviously I, I started to be a part of, of the of the scene in Milan. That's why Aviamar is so well linked in in Italy, and we are all over the place because we used to live in the main places before going to the south and as an adult. So we at that time also started the the Duplet Studio, that is our maybe biggest business. Mm-hmm. And because I had artists in the city every fucking day. So, for example, if, um, for example, Bujo, if Bujo asked to do, had to do some, uh, three months or two months tour all over Europe, you can be sure the day, the off days, the day off days were in Milan all the while. Okay. Because it, that, that city were good linked and very cheap in front of other capitals like Paris or Berlin or London. So they used to be there, and obviously enough days we could, we made a lot of work. Okay. And we did our first sound clash in 2007 in Rome, mm-hmm. and we won it. It was a straight luck off, mm-hmm. and we played a couple of Toots and the Metals and Vibes Carter combination that directly gave uh, gave us the ticket for the Europe scene. Mm-hmm. At that time, from 2000 and 2005, for those years were the gold years of Germany. Like Sentinel, Supersonic, Soundquake were in the best area, in the, in the best time ever. Mm-hmm. And also Germany was full of festivals, full of, we are talking about festival with 200,000 people. Mm-hmm. So we take the flight and the second clash were directly in Stuttgart. We was promoted by Sentinel. Mm-hmm. We won it. It was against D-Bots and Capitan C from Japan that he just left Mighty Crown at that time. Mm-hmm. And and rough back. Yeah. We won it and directly a few months later we were in the rhythm clash. Rhythm clash was like the war clash of Europe for in those years. Mm-hmm. Was a clash attended by more than two thousand people. Mm-hmm. 
and we won the clash. We were still an upcoming son. I mean, we were playing from 10 years, but all, not on the big level, like uh, local promotions and things. Mm -hmm. And from 2007, we got our exploitation. Okay. And um, we won the Reading Clash, I think, in 2011 or 12. Mm -hmm. 11. Yeah. And we killed in that Rhythm Clash where uh, Evian, Guiding Star, was the leading uh, sound from France. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who is uh, Seti Lok from Germany, that was the, the, the last year champion. And Blunt, Poison Dart from Antigua and Blunt Posse from, from New York. Okay. We went in the Chum Fishing, we blunt posse and we won it. Okay. And it would have been the first Italian sound to ever win the, the biggest work, the biggest European competition. Okay. So automatically we went to the Amazura the next five months mm -hmm. with the base of DC, Black Cat, mm -hmm. Jake's, and, but it was playing Cinemax at that time. Okay. Not, not, uh, and, and Tech Nine. And we went in the Chum Fishing at the Amazura with, with the base of DC. That was the first time, because we, we went several times in, a, in our life, but it, it was the first time with the, with the, with the base of DC. And also the first time the base of DC played back something like five songs in the Chum Fichon. Mm -hmm. So the people starting to leaving out of the Amazura. We went, we finished the clash with like, we started from like one, more than 1,000, 1,500. The clash done at the end with 300 only because people didn't get this. I mean, I don't know if we deserve to win. We were, we were like the underdog, so it was like easy. You know? Nobody is targeting you yeah. the New York way. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we did very, very good, even if our English was totally mm -hmm. not understandable, not at all. Mm -hmm. Remember, we don't have English school in Italy at that time. So okay. basically we learned from, especially in the South, mm -hmm. we learned from the, from the music directly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that clash was the song for that gave us uh, extra fame mm -hmm. because of the beef with the, with the, with the base of this. Like basically people said, yeah, they won, but they didn't want the people really because people was living already. Mm -hmm. So, and from that it has been uh, just a ticket on the highest level. I mean, World Clash Reset in Amazura. We have been in the Bronx with the Addis. We, we have been in the UK Cup. Mm -hmm. And the last UK Cup, that, is the, that was the UK World Clash. I mean, it's same, still Chin involved and Lady V. Mm -hmm. and, and at that time, still... We, were, we went in the Chum Fichun, we based this, and the scene was the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, we won every round and we lost at the end. Okay. And, you know, you, you got this kind of momentum when people say you had a new mighty crown, this kind of, the, of talks, obviously, mm -hmm. is, they are very good for the fame. Mm -hmm. At the main time, at the same time, we started to, to go to the festivals as well. You remember Europe got some of the biggest festivals in the world when it comes yeah. to reggae music. Yeah. And since we are part of the doublet work in, uh, at the same time of the promotion, get, going on in a stage, in a festival, when, where you know everybody, I mean, as an artist, mm -hmm. give you a, a, an extra door, you know, to enter the business. Okay. So from 2007 and eight as well, we have our own promotion in, in summertime in Salento, that is our area. Mm -hmm. And it's a free dance on the beach. It's like there's no entry fee. Okay. And we got from 2000 to 5,000 people in the dance. Okay. Every time Mataran comes, there is a documentary in, on the internet, it's Calma Manera. Okay. And basically, is that, that dance is the reason why Mataran keeps mm -hmm. saying that Salento is like the, island, the, the Jamaica of Europe. Okay. Because I don't know if you've ever been to Fully Loaded, but it's like the same, directly. You have the, the it's in the countryside, on the sea, but still countryside. Mm -hmm. So you have the cars parked under the olive trees, and you have to walk like one kilometer to reach the dance in the middle of nowhere. Okay. And then you have like a festival. Okay. Matter of fact, every artist that come at the first impression is like, oh, this is a festival, but it's not, it's a dance. Okay. So you have like a stage, a sound system stage. It's like, like the, the Stone Loved Quarter. And mm -hmm. the artists go on stage and sing. 
and that is a sort of extra vibe that obviously gets the, the fame of heavy armor. I mean, we are a sort of, of a strange European sound. I mean, we don't have the, the biggest and cleanest stage on like a rock star, but we have the biggest crowd. Oh, okay. That's why heavy armor has been always strong as a crowd puller, because we come from the south. It's like, it's like a sound from Montego Bay, for example, from, from Flancas. You know, this kind of country sound, they have sometimes a biggest fan base than the Kingston sounds. Mm -hmm. Because a city is a city, countryside is countryside. Yeah. Obviously, we have a lot of people working around us for the dances. We have a lot of work in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. And Salenta always been like that, even before Heavy Armor, because we, uh, we have a lot of local songs, local bands singing on the rhythms. Mm -hmm. Some of them, like Sutsan System, they are very big. I mean, they can pull 20,000 people in Europe everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. And we have started to work as official link for Albo Rossi as well. Mm -hmm. And most of the Albo fame is based on the Heavy Armor work. I mean, at one time, every sound in Europe got some Alborosi dubs. Oh, okay. We had a strategy for that. Oh, I mean, prices have a link and things. Mm -hmm. And basically, since everybody was playing Alborosi, mm -hmm. the, it, it was like a massive artist. I mean, everybody, every sound. You know, it's not like, for example, Movado, you have to pay those grants or two grants to get a song. So basically, just a few sounds can play it. Mm -hmm. We did the contrary. Every small son could play Alborosi dub, and we, he built his fame from, the, from scratch, from the crowd. And now he's one of the most booked artists ever. Okay. And then we went to the UK Cup, we went to Jamaica, and we have been everywhere. We have been, I mean, we basically meet every, every big sound, and we basically book in our place every big sound. There is only one sound that didn't reach Mamanera yet, it's Firelings. Okay. It's just because, because it's, it's don't, it doesn't travel too much and the lay is not the best in, you know, you know the things about fire links already. So, yeah. But people like Besa DC, um, Mataran, Crown, and Black, Black Chinese. We used to manage Black Chinese in Europe for some years. Okay. And Conscience, Roman Virgo, Idonia, War 21, they, they keep coming in our place year by year. Okay. So they are. They always stay like one, two weeks sometimes mm -hmm. for the different for the flights connection. Mm -hmm. So even the local people know them. Okay. It's, it's it's very strange because you can find a situation like in Kingston, but in the other side of it of the world, mm -hmm. it, in a white man place. I mean, somewhere where you don't believe people can really talk about reggae. I mean, you can go to to buy the bread. Mm -hmm. And the seller was talking about this, the song in the dance the day before. Yeah, okay. Or you can go to the hospital. So I, I just went to the hospital yesterday mm -hmm. to check my baby. Mm -hmm. And we were talking with the doctor about the, my, the, the clash with poison dart uh -huh. online. Because he was mm -hmm. checking, uh, was listening. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. You know? it, it's, it's still Italy. I mean, I don't believe anybody in the world can check the Italian songs or the, the Italian music like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I find somebody that maybe play Italian songs in Australia, I will say, okay, maybe it can happen, but it can't. Okay. And that's the power of reggae music, I think. Who would you say are your earlier influences? What do you when mean? When you so began, like, uh, where, where, where did you get the influence to join some, the sound system culture? Well, one in 98, I remember the other founder of the sound, that is not active still, but still part of the crew, gave me a tape of, um, I think it was 99, was the War Clash with Jaro. Mm -hmm. And obviously people like Ricky Trupa, Jaro, and the clash, the two clashes with the Fire Links and Mataran, with those sick rhythm like 20% more than normal speed. Those, those are, are my, my, my influence, of course. Then you have Black China and so on. But we started from Mataran, Jaro, and Firelinks, and obviously Mighty Crown, because that, that, that time was the only foreign sound to join, the, to enter in the business with a plan and be there. And, but we discovered later, when we reached Japan in our tours, that Mighty Crown also was like the last, the biggest thing in 
a place in a country that was playing reggae music for 40 years. Mm-hmm. We have been in Japan for the first sound clash tour, a, a European sound ever did, like 10 days, 10 sound clashes in a row. And there are some songs that can't even speak English, but they play music from generation to generation. I mean, there is a song called Bot Wings. They play from 40 years. Those guys can play like 30 Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown alongside early bounty killer, young Beanie Man. Beanie Man, even before the, his name was Beanie Man. Obviously, it was like the, the, his father cut him dubs in Jamaica at that time. But maybe the language barrier locked them. I mean, Mike Cronin, they can talk very good. The rest of Japan, they don't speak English friendly. Basically, most of the time, Japanese, they don't give a fuck about other, other language. They are already built in the centuries and centuries, you know, it's like a giant to the rest of the world. But you travel in the world, you discover some places where you don't think there are sound system with heavy dubs, with heavy massive or culture, but you find them. I, I think in Africa, we have some, they, they, you, you guys have some places like that, but we didn't reach Africa yet. Okay. So uh, tell me a bit about the dub studio. Well, the dub studio started like a, like a hustling. I mean, we were not able to pay for dubs. Not at all. I said, remember, South Italy is a very poor place. I mean, people pay. The dances most of the time were free or, for example, just the price of a beer. Like a country dance. It's something for the community. It's an alternative to the expensive discotheque. Who can't or don't want to join the expensive... Music went to reggae music. It was more, more, more warm, you know. It's, it's like the, the power of music everywhere. And so we started to, to deal about dubs because I needed a job at that time to stay in Milan. It was a big city and was very expensive. So I started, I knew how to use microphones and mobile things for the studio. And so I, I joined the promotion, the local promotion as, as, a, as an engineer. And then I started collecting dubs. I started, I started hustling. Then the thing went to a real job. Of course, Aviama became very, very big. I mean, we get bookings every weekend, like Friday and Saturday or Saturday alone. But we work more than from, from 50 to 100 shows each year. Sometimes even more than that. So... Of course, from, for more than, than 30 years, we are able to pay for our dubs and things. But the thing started like us. Like we, we, we had to, find, to look for a job and we chose the reggae music way. Oh, okay. What would you say is your biggest clash? Well, our biggest clash maybe was... Worldwide is the UK Cup. Oh, okay. And is the UK Cup because we destroyed the clash with our first song. It was the, the BC Signal, were prepared dub. And those clash, everybody was angry too. I mean, there, there, are, there were the UK sounds, little sample, and I don't remember the other one, German Nuclear maybe. They were angry to represent UK. Base of DC got a big fan base in UK where they were angry to confirm Base of DC. Be- King Addis was as their first time after the Babyface era back in the UK and they were so angry to, to leave a mark. Then Eviama came and totally fucked up the clash with one song only. It was the first song. And basically, it was a custom, but not against everybody, just against the promoter herself. I mean, it was like a, like a joke, like the promoter is one of my, my biggest friend and the biggest supporter in the sound clash business is Lady V. Lady V is part, is like the, if Irish and Chin is the 50% in the world, Lady V is the other 50%. Mm-hmm. And is a very respectful lady. Is the son of, uh, is representing V Rocket Sound. Is one of the first sound ever to leave Jamaica and reach UK. Uh, her father is a legend in the business. Uh, she, she's always been in the business. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, V-Rocket is one of the oldest songs in the UK. They can play 
everybody from Tenorso to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And UK Cup was not doing, I mean, they didn't keep the UK Cup for some reasons in London, uh, connected to the fact they didn't allow the black people to have their own clubs and their own promotion for years. So basically we went to the clash and said like, uh, the, the rhyme was like, Lady V is making money with the sound clash again. It was some, the, the, the place was full of people and everybody in the crowd was thinking about, oh, sound clash nice again, they are doing big money today. So we connected with the first line and all those other customs talking about killing sound and killing sound, they, were, they didn't get no sense and no forward for the rest of the night. Then also we played a combination with the Gapirang's Styloji, that were the two biggest UK artists. And they didn't belong together at that time. Like, like um, Cartel and Movado or Benny and Bounty, they didn't work together. And we, are, we were able to get the only combination with them. And the thing was so heavy that somebody fucked up the, 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 the line during the doublet. I mean, at, at the middle of the doublet, total silence. Mm -hmm. And I got mad, mad on stage. Like, like everybody, like people start um, screaming like, is sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. They're sabotaging the, 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 the youngster from Italy. So it, it was very nice. And then also personally, I got my daughter, the, my first daughter, like one month before, I didn't want to leave. You know, it, Italy is all about family thing, you know. I didn't really want to leave was the Easter night, the, the Saturday before Easter. It's something that we, we don't travel usually. I, I personally don't leave my family in those times. So, but for Lady V, I, 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 have, I had to do it. I can't re really flop Lady V in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, so the, the night was huge. Then you can, we can talk about Jamaica, War Clash, Reset, Monte Carlo. We have a lot of good, nice memories to do with this music. So uh, you mentioned something about language barrier. Yes. How important is speech in a clash? Well, it depends where. If you go to Jamaica, they don't give a fuck about what you said. I mean, none of what you said. They don't give a fuck if you have issues with the language. Because Jamaica, I mean, real Jamaicans, I mean, Jamaicans in the countryside, they just, I, one thing I learned, they feel the vibe. I mean, the fact that you are playing a music, they own music, and you come from foreign, they really appreciate it. I mean, I'm talking about real citizen, I mean, not sound, sound business. I mean, the people, the, the, the anchor boy that listen to you playing music or listen to your dubs. After the work clash, we stayed in Kingston for a few days. The people were stopping us in the streets. Even if the, work, the, the clash was in Montego Bay at Pier 1. And we kept also a low profile, you know, and they didn't uh, go to the studio and say, yo, I'm a heavy armor. The business was done. I wanted just to enjoy a couple of days of real holidays in Jamaica after the clash. And the people used to stop by, by us by the street and talk about, oh, you did, you said that and things. If you go to New York, New York is way different. New York is like the school of sound system. One word and, and the thing is done. No matter if you play Bon Marley, Supercat or whatever, they... And also is a very strong argument when you want to make somebody look funny, you know? Just go to the school and learn English. But I can, I could say the same in, but I don't do it obviously. But if somebody come to Europe, for example, Italy, and go on stage and can't say a couple of Italian words to, to involve the people, you know? Because you travel the world, not everybody play, talk your language. But it's something that is really heavy only in New York, especially on internet. I used to leave the New York scene by dancereggae.com on those days. And obviously it's internet, the eight is big. But uh, so I was like prepared on the first night in Amazur, I was thinking like, yo, New York is heavy, New York is hard. Just go there, play music, don't make no mistakes and things. I was very nervous. 
But the fact is, when I reached the Amazura, Amazura was, was full of regular people. I mean, normal people that really, they don't give a fuck about uh, the sound clash dictionary or the sound clash rules. They just want to have a good night. It's a Saturday night. And that's why we, we always, and I teach this to the new selectors in the sounds. We are the, are the fourth generation now. Don't give a fuck about the internet because in it, you will never find anybody supporting you. And most of the time is people that don't leave their houses to buy a ticket for your, for your night, not even your sound clash. I mean, all the haters we had in at that time, or I see, for example, the, a sound with a lot of 80s, Addis, the new generation. I mean, I'm talking like 10 years before, those guys have no chance on internet. People, everybody was cursing them without even let them play one song. It's like, in Italy we say it's like a Sunday, everybody's a coach. Because on Sunday we have the football games. And Italy, everybody is a coach. Even somebody that, that used to be a plumber the day before, Biggest, the biggest, become the biggest coach in Italy. It's allowed to talk. But a matter of fact, the coach is just, is just one, is the only one that knows what he's doing. Then everybody in the, in the stadium still they are enjoying the game. That's my part. I, I just focus to people that enjoy the dance. Of course, I can flop a dance. I mean, everybody can flop. I mean, everybody can have a good, a bad night. But linking this with the language barrier, it's not really about if you feel that is a barrier that will lock you. I see some sounds from Japan. We, we, there is a sound called Jawworks. I was a part of a clash promoter in, sound in Salento last year. It was him and other sound from Europe and Italy. He won the clash. He couldn't even speak English good without even talking Italian at all. But the vibe was there, you know, the man, somebody can play music and give you a vibe at the end of the night, you give you a vote because it, it made you feel good that night, entertained, as, as we said. So, yes, of course, we can't talk like a Jamaican. We can't talk like a, a New York people. We come from Italy. We always come from Italy. The thing can change. So I think it's now time for your memorable dubs. Yes. Yeah, you're going to play me five or ten of your most memorable dubs with a story behind it. Of course. The first time we have been in Germany, in the Sentinel place for our clash, we went with the d bots and Rough Park that were already like addicted to the sound clash. And so they, they did already any, some other sound clash in Germany. Germany is very strong also with the English. I mean, people can understand the songs and they, they start, they learn English from the very early school days. So we were against some sounds that were, they sound very, way better than us. But at the same time, we took advantage from our issues. I mean, we didn't sound perfect. And that mean, at one time, and there was a fight in between the sounds, but they were so professional to take it even on a personal level, like New York, for example, that's kind of badness on stage. And we took advantage from this, and the biggest forward of the night, of the night has been this one. We played this sizzler to separate ourselves from the rest of the sounds, and it worked because everybody started to smile at this unknown sound from, from Italy and gave us the trophy. This is Sisla Kalanji. I'm a say I'm a big of a self rapper, Jackie Steer, so GG, I don't know. Quasta Janjo, Sisla Kalanji. Rich, I'm in a cat. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, ah. Humility, we used to survive. Every I'm a kill your sound with simplicity tonight. Humility is what we used to survive. Every I'm a kill your sound with simplicity. All right. Humility, we the used good. to survive. Yeah. Ooh, every I'm a come protect them life. Humility, we used to survive. Every I'm a kill your sound with simplicity. Yes, not the one back up on the tonight. You know, when you're, you were talking about language barrier, when the language is a problem, maybe sometimes because you are too nervous on stage, and 
we focus on the music. I mean, we leave the message to the music so the people can understand way more clear and get it. And it's all that, about that in Sound Clash. I mean, the music is nice, the, the, the lyrics are good, and the lyrics eat something. Not only a sound for kill. Sometimes it's just eating the people vibe, you know? Uh, we were in this clash and they started, the sounds start to fight and uh, the, um, we separate each other and it worked very good. And the next one I want to play is the reason why we won the, um, our first sound clash in, um, in Italy. It was 2006 and nobody, and Carter was in his art days. And uh, we have been, we had a chance to link him and work with him because you have to understand, people used to come to Italy as an artist and we couldn't fly out to Jamaica. But the link was there. I mean, once I had Sasko, Buja and those kind of artists every day, I used to go out with them recording, then have dinner and pizzas, go to the sea and girls and things you know they used to stay here obviously when they, they come to jamaica they pass us the links we are part of, of, of a sort of of family we can say family mm -hmm. some of those people on those times still are with heavy armor now when we go to jamaica so we were able to record vibes cartel alongside toots and metals and the combo could not be, the, we can't do it together because the biggest sound of cartel that time was the I Never on the June Canoe Rhythm. Mm -hmm. And basically it's a reprise of a metal song. It's called I Never as well. Mm -hmm. And Toots didn't know it. And cartel didn't want Toots to know it <laughs> because of the copyrights and things. Toots was a, a, is a, a legend, I mean, with lawyers and things. And cartel was like... In, was just exploded at that time, but not still strong as a world team, no? And this is the only I never combination. And th let me play this for you. This is the first one of the two cartel and toots combination. Yeah, this is some two kilometers alongside. Turn up cartel. the volume. And the heavy Amazon member. Sound boy, you can't play this. Number good now. No, can't play this. Again. It's good now. Add again. Yeah, man. We can play this kind of songs already, right? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna get banned? No, 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 it's good. Uh, you know what happened in Jamaica? You can say something, I mean, we recorded Toots, then our friends went to cartel. And somehow the tune leave the, the cartel studio and came back to Toots. So Toots didn't get it bad. I mean, he get it very good. Like, uh, okay, I didn't know it. There is no problem about that. And he, did, he was not thinking about copyrights and things, but okay. he liked the song. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do another combination with them and both in the, in the studios. And basically Toots picked up the song. I mean, it's not a song from him directly, originally, but it was just being released in those, those years on one uh, Toots album, I don't remember the name. It's Ray Charles. And at that time, Cartel just released the remix of this Ray Charles song. So basically we did the duplet. It was a real combination even on the, on seven inch, because it was a sample of Ray Charles with Cartel and the Richards cover on the Toots album. This one is the only, the, uh, the second one is, is still a blueprint. Nobody can play it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, this is the 
This is Tuts from Tuts and the Meters, along with Vice Cartel and the Heavy Hammer Sound. <laughs> so yes, your well, 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 they are both well, together well, in the studio, well, so you can listen. In time we murder sound boy In a DTR, in a the night hour Gunshot a drive in a them life fast car Then GG rise up the SLR Kappa shot in a them head It a give them to a scar Glad the body boy sound come a promote war Hey dudes, shoot them men go far A fan scar tell you know Teach us the war Me gunshot them on hotter than solar Murder sound boy fuck him down when you want The dub plate is long like five minutes uh, okay. It's the cafe side all the while Then dudes mm -hmm. come back and mm -hmm. It was something like an open mic and the, the artist did everything. You know? So the next one is not a dub plate, it's not a sound class song. Mm -hmm. When in those 20 years of working with Jamaica and we always have been involved in the, in the promotion of the new artists. And some of the new artists are part of the Heavy Armor family now. I mean, the link is very strong, even outside of music, I mean. So, I mean, we talk about kids and this kind of things, you know. One of these artists is a very good youth called Roma in Virgo. And at that time, we were working with Darwin from Vikings, his original label. And it was Roma in Virgo and Loyal Flames, the two artists of the label. And we were talking with Darwin, with Mr. Darwin, and he sent us like a promo of a new song from Loyal Flames with a sort of, um, of rhythm. And we said, okay, the rhythm can't fit in Europe. I mean, the artist is too new. The, I suggest to do like a ballad with a guitar, with a, just acoustic guitar. So they went to uh, one of the, Mar the Damian Marley guitarists and built the same rhythm just with a guitar. Roman Virgo was, in the, was involved also because there was a label, like a selection on the rhythm. And he did one of the biggest get song ever, it's called System. But we did it also since we were working on the sound, like we are part of the song from scratch, from the idea, you know? We wanted the sound, the dub plate to talk about our sound. And Virgo did this, this, uh, this dub plate, I will let you listen. The biggest part of the story is that this dub plate is, fa is more famous than the original song, especially in our place. It's like a, it's like a people anthem. And when Roman Virgo came to Mamanera for his first time, he went on the speaker because we had not a real stage. I mean, he just climb on the speaker and sung the duplet. You can find the video on YouTube. Not the original, just the duplet. And people, we have a thousand people singing the duplet lyrics. Especially because he talk about reggae music and how to play a sound. This car is Roman Virgo system. MS and the Roman Virgo represent the heavy Amazon every time. And so I say, Ralph and Jenky, John Joe, DJ. <laughs> Whole family, so I said, Play, yeah, oh, every day I'm a play every day. This song is big, I'm not happy. Play, when every I'm a started 99, from South Italy, Father Line, playing music with a smile, yeah. Them kill sound in a New York When them clash with pies and that Them one rhythm clash from the start yes. When weekend clubs get burned And I be a girl everywhere we turn From what I start to earn yes. When the names that know in the street And everybody start to see it. Them say, every I'm up Tell me how you do it Oh, 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 o
this one. Mm -hmm. One of our biggest doublet. How many dubs you want me to play? Uh, not more than 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me touch the argument with the Binion Bounty combination. It's one of the biggest topic when it comes to heavy armor. Mm -hmm. We have been able to play this combination in the World Clash in 2013 in Mobe, Jamaica. And it has the biggest forward of the night. To be honest, we, were, we, didn't, very, very do, we didn't very well in the Clash. I mean, our first round was kind of horrible. We just came from Amazur a few months before, so we didn't know about our clashing in Jamaica. We were with the, those New York mentality, New York vibe, that is not working in Jamaica at all. I mean, it's a total different planet. But you know, the beef with the base of this is strong. I mean, we are friends, but sound clash wise, we are still re rival, you know? And they play Bini and Bounty combination for years. This combination is kind of old. It was not being done in 2013. But those combinations don't call each other name. So they played in the Sound Clash and we contract with this. And this one is a real combination. I mean, I, mean, I, can, I can say about mine. I don't mind about everybody else. But it was one of the few Bini and Bounty combinations that they ever done when they were fighting still. Of course, we recorded the fight is from the 90s. I mean, we recorded it like 20 years later. And we are from the other side of the, of the world, so maybe there are other sounds that can play this, of course. But at that specific time, nobody else can boss. Nobody did ever boss a bounty bin combination like from 20 years. And there is also a YouTube video about this in Jamaica. You can see the world peer one, the world Jamaica must get it totally crazy about it. And from that time, this is Anthem of Heavy Armor. Bum to Some post one and one said, this is Bailey man alongside Bounty Killer. Yo, Zaga Zaga Zana. The tune got the biggest part of the game. You know, Mr. Profess and the doctor. Back to back to the door. Some motherfucking niggas ain't nothing but hot talk. Burris, motherfuckers just know it's all all the needy man and the terrorists. Get a bunch of the terrorists. It's me in the ambulance. Every am alone can play. Sound like them say them can't wait. Want to them to play in four. They phone, they phone, it's me in the ambulance. Every am alone can play with. Them sound they claim say them can't wait. Them to play them phone, they phone, they phone. Well, have you ever heard that dub mashing up in every class? Bounty be me, every am a well, we are do them that. They never get a gunshot for no work with that. So I the yellow party man a chat and come and tell me them bad. Tell me them bold. Some of them a fussy come and play gangster role. None of them no bad. And just imagine when we are talking about language barrier. The language barrier in Jamaica was, was heavy. But everybody forgot about my language when I played this one. Everybody, just because the, the vibe, the shock of this unknown guy from somewhere in the world playing Binia Mountain, well, nobody in Jamaica could play that on the same stage. It was huge. Matter of fact, we closed the round just playing back the songs again. And then we, the clash were up to Jaro and Besa DC, of course, because that was everybody was, was looking for that. And can I juggle a, a couple of Bini and Bounty combinations right now? Yeah. Because, of course, since it became an anthem, we have a, a, a nice selection of those artists together. So, which year was that? Bini and Bounty still. No, which year was that when you that the clash at Pier One? Which year? 2013, but I think the combination have been recording like in 2010 or 2009. Okay. okay. Kill sound boy on the place them love. And if you walk with a citalion, then can't find nothing better than being him and a bunch. We have the sound with the witch in the stove. Kill sound boy on the place them love. Why if you walk with a citalion, them can't find nothing better than being him and a bunch. When they come out, you talk about a cup of cup. Tell the pussy they forgot what they literally talk about. Them was the past up and them that are not a cup. Batty man forgot me saying the lots of what's on cup of shop. Them straight bread come, them get in cup of cup. About Bini and Bounty combination, I can say one thing. After a while, the, the artists stopped their beef. Now they saved the culture, you know. Until the last week, they did those kind of incredible show on internet. And 
we didn't clash in Italy anymore after the, the first clash. And we didn't clash in Europe anymore from like 10 years because we always fly out. It's not really a, a choice to don't clash at home. It's like simply other plants or the wild. We came back to clash uh, in Italy, in Europe at the war in the East, uh, like a couple of years ago mm -hmm. with the warrior song. That is one of the, uh, is maybe the song that I rate to the max in Europe now. And warrior just reached the, the war clash level at the same time. We are very, very close friends. We played together for like, maybe, I don't know, 20 or 40 times. Of course, he got some Bini and Bounty combination as well. So was the topic like, you know, when you play the original one and you can counteract and things. So we, we won the clash by lock off. So they were the two biggest sound in Europe at that time. And we clash each other and the clash lock off. It, it, it has been shut down in like in less than two hours. The promoter was mad at us, but the people just said lock off. And one of the biggest tune of the night has been this one. Play this way, play this way. Uh, heavy hammer sound, the Italian dub master. Heavy hammer! Yeah, uh, uh, know where yourself, Rafa. I want to them check it. I want to them fool them at this the whole family. Every time. Hey, some boy here, man, cut the plate and then gang gang cut the plate. I want to know nothing about the plate, man. Heavy this rhythm is a blueprint, too. Hey, it has yeah, been made by uh, uh, Italian heavy producer, Carl Macron. What am I trying? Huh? Rough on Jackie, motherfucker, niggas, you know it's all on the need in that. Hey, yo. How do you feel when you spend big money on a dog? We just got with the Italian selection. You play a bunny to kill alongside being him hard. When every am a bust the first one. How do you feel when you're coming on the dance and a fret? Every am I just line out the brand new set. You feel like a big combination just can't. But every am I bust another one. Son, why a figure play? Big feed them life and go down pan them day. And son, why a figure play? Every am I play the best in him and I'm going to the war. Heavy hammer, beanie, yum, bunty. Got the son, boy, fast, fast, got that trumpet. Heavy hammer. Clash done. Mm -hmm. Just this and clash done. And my last dub plate mm -hmm. is, we, as I said, the, since the language barrier, we want the music talk for us. Well, basically, we cut, we are very focused on the lyrics because our dubs must be different. It's not just taking the forward on killing sounds. He has a sort of attitude of the sound that everybody's coming after me to write down the lyrics. And one of the biggest issue when it comes to lyrics is that the way we can talk Jamaican on English can be funny sometimes. Yeah, true. To the, to the original year. So we don't have any ghostwriter. So it's like a natural evolution that the, the first dubs are not nice. Then we get experience and experience and experience. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have some friends that help us. I mean, if I send a leak to Roman Virko, for example, just made one, to make one, he say, okay, Rafa, this line must be corrected, of course. But is that happen when you have a link with the, with the artist? Also, not in a business way, not in a money link, just as a... As a, as a person, you know, it's like everybody correct each other. And the next duplet is not a straight sound killing duplet, it's, sound, it's like, like an advice to the new sounds because we deal with duplets as like a job. It is a, a job that is totally separated from the sound. I mean, the sound got the bookings, the festival, the promotion, and the studio work is different. It's a sort of separate. But sometimes the young soul, they think that they can spend all the mortgage money, all the money they have from the family, cut ups, and automatically they become booked. They get clubs, they get bookings, they travel all over the world. It can up like that. Like that. The biggest thing for a sound is to pull up a crowd. Your own massive, even if it's a bar with 20 people and your 20 friends, if your friends don't come to your dance, don't even think about that plate. True. Matter of fact, we are the dub plate masters, and that's how the people call us. We have one of the 
the biggest box in the world, maybe. I don't know, maybe somebody is bigger that way. Of course, somebody with a longer career is bigger than us, but it's one of the box, boxes the people look for, the people look up. But it's not only about dubs. We did our first duplet in 2003, four years after getting the sound together and playing all over, all over we cool. And if you play a duplet, there is nobody to hear it. I mean, nobody to feel it as like your own sound. You are a total innocence for me. And your doublet is just, uh, it's like, like buying something from the supermarket. Okay. This one is by the name and by the voice of Beres Ahmad himself. Heavy Ahmad sound. The Italian dub masters. I want to big up Father Rafa, Jackie, and the whole family. Run. Kill yeah. them, Heavy Ahmad. Sound boy, you never will understand it. How to be a champion sound. You can buy one million of your dub plates, but you still cannot pull no crowd. Every hour put the people together. Everybody love the Italian sound. Every fight we go through we take over. Cause every hour always kill up sounds. Sound guy, you put it up resistance. Every I'm gonna hammer you down, sound guy. You put it up resistance. Every I'm gonna chop you down. The best feeling in a sound clash is that when a sound clash starts, they all say your name, and you got the biggest father from your fans. Mm-hmm. That's the best feeling a sound boy can have in life. That means somebody already know you, and somebody rate you, somebody is willing to listen to you. But we experienced also the, the opposite side. I mean, somebody, they all say your name and nobody give a fuck. I mean, you are the underdog, but it's only one of the best positions you, you can have in a sound clash because you can use the surprise element. A sound, a big sound, always have to confirm that it's a big sound. Mr. Nobody can surprise everybody because nobody's putting you under pressure. And I, I'm, I'm willing to hear some new sounds. Europe now needs some really, some new sounds to take over and build back everything because of course we are getting old. Every, every big sound is getting old. At one time, we, we, will, we will lose the, the link to the youths. And so I hope the new sounds will take advice. You just talked about uh, the link to the youths. Yes. Would you say that uh, the, the younger generation in Italy is uh, picking up the culture? Yeah. There, there always been a strong link between reggae music and Italian culture. Some, it's even funny that when it comes to the jokes, some jokes that are made in Italy, especially in the South, are made in Kingston as well. You don't need even the translation to English. It's like directly patwa. And I mean, regular jokes. I mean, people, jokes in the streets, not even about music. I think there is a sort of feeling, natural feeling between people struggling everywhere in the world. South Italy is a poor place. Jamaica is not the richest place in the world. So when a music comes to the streets, no matter with the language, you, you get involved everywhere you are. And that's why reggae music get, reggae music and dancehall music, not only reggae music, and it's not Bob Marley song. I mean, really, really dancehall music, dancehall culture is strong in Italy. And sometimes it's even stronger than the rest of Europe. I mean, in the rest of Europe, you have not so many street dances like you have in Italy. That, that's why even if our English is the worst, but in Mamanera, each year on those beach, I have people coming from all over Europe to see the vibe. Even if, for example, there is no stage, the sound system is not the best in the world. I mean, the sound system, the PA is not the best. It's a street dance. It's all The vendors are not the most clean, you know, but the vibe is there. And in Italy, we have a lot of youths coming up every year. But the problem is that is to find the spaces for reggae music. That's the biggest problem because 
um, reggae music is people music and we still suffer from the um, the, the fascism era that is like 50 years old in Italy, Mussolini and things, for example, those kind of right parties, they don't want the people to talk. So they don't support, they fight against people music. That's it. So sometimes on the internet, I see somebody comparing the Italian sound to the fascist. It's a reality. We are a part of the revolution against them from more than 40 years. It, it, it started with the folk music, local music, and then reggae, pa, reggae music take a part of it. But is, there is no way you can find somebody of those... Comparing to USA, we can say Trump supporters playing music. Because it's something, something from the streets, you know. So yes, there is, a, there is the new sounds just struggle to find a place to have their own promotion. It was way better in the past, but they still find it. They still find it. They have the same sound that book us regularly all over the country, and it's very nice to see somebody like 17, 18, 20 years old putting all his efforts to keep a dance with Avi Amar. Sometimes we even help them, for example, cutting out, getting a big discount on the, of, on the show fee, for example, because it's part of the culture. I mean, if reggae music is alive, my sound is alive. If people are starting to forget or have no chance to listen to reggae music and dance all, I have no chance to play it. So I have to go back to my regular job and forget about music. But since it's reggae music, much of our life in the last 20 years is not our intention to live. Mm -hmm. With sound clash or without sound clash, it's no matter. We play dancer. We love dancer. We love Jamaica and we bring a little part of Jamaica in Italy. And the people like it and love it. So I think there is a future still for dancer culture in Europe, especially in Italy. Looking at uh, Clash then and now, like uh, 1999, early 2000, what is missing? I think there are too many coaches on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the problems, I, I, I started, I fell in love with that World Clash tape from, with Jaro from 99 without understanding speech and without understanding the songs. That was my first exploit to the, to the sound clash. And it, killed, it mashed up my life forever. Because that tape got a vibe. No video, just the tape in my car. My small car was just like 18 is the time when you, in Italy we st you can start driving. And it was my mom's car. I used to stay there and listen to that tape all the day because I couldn't listen to it at home. I mean, there was somebody screaming all the while. So what I know I see now is too many talks about music. Music don't need so much talk. And you can't make, can't discuss, especially in a bad way, for days and days and days and days on the internet. What is written on internet stayed on internet. It can be read anytime. So the hate, the bad vibe, the bad vibe is always there because everybody wants to be a coach and everybody finds some problems and things. But a matter of fact, that killed the expectation from Saturday to Saturday, from weekend to weekend. At that time, I could not wait to go to the dance the next weekend to listen to some other music. Nowadays, I get the music whenever you want, whenever I want. I get more music than what I want, and I get all the kind of discussions on it. It's something that really saturates me. Even if I, I am a sort of professional in this business, I manage a company with reggae music and things. Even if me need to turn off the computer at one time, or I deleted the, the Facebook app from my phone, for example, because it was killing my vibe. And I didn't really want to go a dance anymore. 
Like, I mean, it, of course we play every weekend, but I mean, it was for me, after a week of shit storming about this culture, about this music, about this and that, why I have to choose reggae music on Saturday? And if I do this kind of argument, just imagine the regular people. Reggae music has always been about vibe. That's why you don't find many things about heavy armor audios and things on the internet. Just those ones for the promotion. That then we have to build the people expectation because if there is no expectation to have a good night, mm -hmm. a nice entertainment, the people don't come to the dance. And that affects everywhere in the world. Sound clash is even worse. And every clash promoter know about it. And the worst part of it is that when the, the noise on internet is made by the, the promoter himself, that's the worst. You will never find still the promoter of the biggest clashes in history, even talk on internet. Because nobody, the, nobody wants to know the promoter, you know? Uh, if I go to a concert of uh, Rihanna, I don't want to see the promoter big up himself on the internet and say, yo, I'm the promoter of the concert. It, it's something that killed the vibe, you know? Or the promoter going on the internet and say, yo, Rihanna didn't go last night. What the fuck? It's something that even it was true, it's not up to you. It's something to the people, to the fans. We have more professionals in this music talking more than the fans them. I don't know if somebody think that can help themselves to get bookings around the world. It doesn't help. If you are there every week and every day on internet, nobody will book your sound. Nobody. Because you can't play songs to internet. No, you don't make, you can't go on Facebook. You talk all the while. You don't play music. And we are here to play music. That, that was a missing from that vibe. Sometimes I have more vibe in a small clash I get my surprise, you know, I get surprised. You know, listen, this unknown sound, what the fuck they are playing. Listen, the attitude of these youth, you know, I get more involved in small events than the, in the bigger events. That's why I rate my crowd. You don't, they don't stay on internet. I mean, they don't answer Facebook. They don't, they, and that's why the people still love them. Look at Rodigan. Look at Papa Jar himself. Mr. Harper, don't give a fuck about them. It's not even on, on there, but, but everybody still loves Jaro after, after 20 years. And Jaro is not a sound that is anywhere, any day in the clashes. But everybody knows that Jaro is a big and serious sound. And be on internet, when I see a selector, a sound, a sound owner chatting on internet like an idiot, everybody will think that he's an idiot and nobody will go to the dance. Simple, simple math. And I know, you know, I have four generations of selectors in my sound. Some of them are really young, you know, they are fast on writing. And when I tell, told them, turn off your fucking phone, don't answer. No, but the man diss me, don't answer, don't answer. Because when you answer, the, the damage is on sound. It's not on internet. Those guys on, on Facebook chatting shit every day, they are professional in that. They exist before they have only the internet connection. We exist because we have the crowd, the people, the, do the dubs, the club, them, the festival, the bookings. We can't damage everything because we have to answer to Mr. Nobody. That happened after the poison dart clash and uh, on, with the worshiper, you know, the D. Brown argument. The man turned upside down what I said. Maybe my English. I did a mistake saying what I was saying, a misunderstanding and things. But there is no need in music to shit bomb my sound or somebody's sound like that. Because the, the thing get excal escalated quickly. I mean, some, some idiots talked about white man against black man, then uh, European. What the fuck are you doing? The, mis the, the damage you, have, you are doing it's bigger than you, want, you are thinking. Because if you put people against the other one, there is nothing good. I mean, we took years and years 
to bring artists here, you know, and a lot of promoters before us. You really want to pass the communicate the, the message that this culture is just full of hate and there is no vibe anymore. Why? You have to those people have to simply shut down. Shut the fuck up. Because they say they are preserving the culture, but matter of fact, they are killing it. Because saying that nobody is allowed to play reggae music or is a, is a thing that white people can't do, is not true. When you go to these people, it's not even from Jamaica. I mean, when I go to Jamaica, I feel welcome. If somebody go to Jamaica, they feel welcome. It's, it's the, 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 the biggest part of reggae music. Reggae music make you feel welcome. If I don't feel welcome, I have million different musics to play or to go to the night or to buy records, to buy tickets. There, a lot, there are a lot of idiot festivals of techno music all over the world, you know? If I just want to look for a girl and dance and have sex. It's all about music, it's all about, all about life, you know? Mm-hmm. Reggae music is made by people. It's one of the few music in the world that is made by people to people. It's not machine to machine. Or record to record, it's people to people. We can't mix reggae songs because there are too many words. Words are made by people. They, I miss the vibe, that's it. But I still find it where I don't believe I can find it. Those guys, those Jawworks from Japan, clashing in the middle of nowhere in the South Italy. Most of the, the people in the crowd were not Soundclash fans. I mean, they didn't know. It was the first Soundclash in their life. Everybody had a good night. I was the host that night. I fucking had fun. Sometimes more than listen to the biggest Soundclash in the Bronx. And it's, that, for me, it's all about that. I mean, if this culture still make me smiling and feeling good, I, I, I keep it with me. So most of some sounds, uh, some good sounds, some big selectors all over the world, even from Jamaica, they left the music because they didn't feel any good, any more good in it. I will never, ever, ever let this happen to myself. Sometimes I have two daughters and one, one son. I play the new, the, the, the vinyls, that's why I keep them. I, I keep them because I don't, I didn't teach them the name of my sound yet. They are just four years and six years. Because I want them to fall in love with this just because it's nice already by playing the songs. They have all the life to learn lyrics, learn arguments, learn food, learn the places. They have it all their life. But the, the basic link must be vibe to vibe, vibe to art. That worked with me. I didn't start the sound because I want to be the next mighty crown. I didn't even know I could travel the world in one, one day. I, and still keep myself humble. You will never find Eviama saying I'm the biggest sound of Europe. Not because it's not true. Because I have to keep myself humble. Otherwise, I will become more important in my head than the music I play. And that will kill my vibe, directly. Nobody wants to listen to a superstar an aggressive superstar, you know, nobody wants to, it's, it's music, somebody else can play it better than you. So, some of the sounds, they just follow too much internet and get, how to say in English, get depressed. And when they go on stage, they feel that they, they, they have to show something, no? Something bigger than music. But as a regular clash attendant, you feel it. You feel it directly. The man is not playing for the people. He's playing for himself or to show that he's able to somebody else that is known, not in this crowd. There are some very, very nice sounds from New York that are wasting their best years for that. And I told them, I, some, some of them, I meet them. I mean, like, I don't want to say names, but I told them, stop playing like the world is against you. Because you love the music, you love the dubs, even if the, those dubs are way older than you, you love them, you know? And 
But if people think the, the world is against them, they will fight and the vibe will be missed. One of the best scenes I've seen in life is the African scene because it's like far from all these chattings. I mean, if I have to entertain people on a Saturday in Germany and in, in Italy or in Japan, I really have, do, do don't take care of what's happening in New York. Nobody in the crowd give a fuck about them. Maybe yes, because I'm a fan, I, I'm interested, but I don't have the, this kind of fucking screen is, is, a, is a disease sometimes. So it's just balance. You know, when, when you go to a dance, you have to balance the, the roots music, the dance and music to keep a vibe and make people enjoy themselves. It's the same with the internet and same with the business. At one time, the business is too much. Just go back and feel good by ourselves. If, if, because if a selector, everything I learned from this music is that if the selector is having fun, the night is done. Look for Ricky Trooper. Sometimes Ricky Trooper get mad in a dance, but he's always having fun. The time when he go over the limit, he lose the clash directly because people don't like it anymore. And I'm not saying anything new. I mean, the arguments are Ricky Troop and Rodigan arguments in many interviews in the past, but I, I took them uh, on myself because they are true. One second. Okay, bye bye. This one. <laughs> It's family <laughs> business, you know. <laughs> this is the last one. Uh, okay. I don't the, know if you're gonna become the, the new selector of Heavy Hammer or he will play any other the, music. I don't know. Bo a, bo a boy? Yeah, yeah, it's a boy. Uh, the last one. Yeah, the last one. But yeah, yeah, one boy and two daughters. Okay. The, yeah. the, the, the two daughters can mix already. Uh, but okay. they don't have access to the duplet box, to the to the acetate yet, because they are too heavy, you know. Okay. I know. Well, when they fall down, they are done. Okay, so let's finish this interview because I see uh, you have other responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just have to, care, to take care of him for a couple of minutes. Okay, so let me ask you, uh, with the current uh, situation with the pandemic, and well, uh, uh, will, uh, will be probably, it will affect the rest of the year. Do you see uh, online dances and clashes as a, a solution? No. For the business? Mm -hmm. No, the online clashes. Are, are uh, the best thing that happened during pandemic because linking to my last argument they were full of vibe and you know most of the people just turn off the computer after the live so they, did, they didn't get the all those votes and chattings about that I mean, for example, my, our clash, or my, even myself, myself listening the, the, the other Walshifier clashes. I just was on my laptop or my phone listening the clash. After the clash was done, I was taking care of something else. But that, that keep me focused on the vibe of reggae music. That's what is nice, you know, because internet is an automatically selection. I can turn off everything. Did you enjoy your last Worship Fire Clash? And so it's a good thing, but we have to go back to the, to the stage. Okay. And I think when people will go back to the stage, they will automatically eliminate all the bad things. Okay. Because, you know, being on the stage every fucking day of your life, you can keep all the bad things with you and you don't recognize them. Mm -hmm. But once you are at home for three months, four months, five months, mm -hmm. you, you see exactly why and what you do. Okay. And what you have done. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Big Deal Sound, for having us in Kenya. It's, you see how, how, how reggae music work. We are in yes. Italy now, talking with Kenya about music from Jamaica. Yes. That, that's the, the vibe I, I, I look for every, every day in this music. Heavy Hammer, thank you so much. And uh, you're let, welcome, and thank yes, you. Yes, keep the link, and I will catch up again. Ciao. Okay, ciao. Thank you.
Listen me, you know this is bass here, yeah, I represent for the big deal sound, you hear me now? The real deal sound from Africa. I know straight out of Compton, big deal straight out of Africa. The motherland, you hear me now man? I know sound better than, yo, warm to them.